A galaxy in the far universe has been discovered by astronomers to be replicated at least 12 times in the night sky. The unique image was captured by the NASA ESA Hubble Space Telescope and may help researchers learn more about the origins of the cosmos. The sunburst arc is the name given to the galaxy that appears numerous times in the photograph. Nearly 11 billion light years separate us from it. Hi guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today we'll be taking a look at one galaxy with 12 doppelgangers in space. Make sure to stick until the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video. It helps us a long way. And let's get started. The light arcs that may be seen in a recent Hubble image aren't the result of unusual lens artifacts or smudges. Instead, they are the lights of a galaxy 11 billion light years away that has been twisted and duplicated by the foreground's gravity. The sunburst arc galaxy, also known as BSZ1 G311.65 18.48, is a streak of at least 12 galaxies that spans the sky. Astronomers are able to explore this phenomenon in great detail as a result. As we all know, gravity is quite alluring. It is the immeasurable, enigmatic force that holds the cosmos together in proportion to mass. An object's gravity is stronger the more mass it has. Furthermore, a strong gravity well has the ability to deflect light in addition to drawing in physical objects. On a galactic scale, this implies that something with a lot of gravity, like a cluster of galaxies, can bend and magnify the light of something behind it in the far off. This is referred to as a gravitational lensing, a consequence that Einstein foresaw. It is frequently used by astronomers to investigate galaxies in the early universe that are otherwise too weak to observe clearly. Also, this lensing effect has the ability to create numerous copies of an image such as a faint far-off galaxy. With the sunburst arc, we are witnessing that, albeit in much more numbers than normal. There is a large cluster of galaxies that is bending and splitting the sunburst arc's light which is located 4.6 billion light years away from us and the galaxy. Four large arcs, three in the top right and one in the bottom left of the image, each contain at least 12 copies of the galaxy, indicating that there are at least 12 copies of the galaxy overall. The sunburst arc is one of the brightest lensed galaxies that is known to exist despite being quite distant due to the power of the lensing. Astronomers are able to distinguish features as small as 520 light years across because some of the duplicates of the galaxy are 10 to 30 times brighter than the galaxy itself, even though it appears to be a huge amount of space. Some nebulae and star-forming areas can quickly occupy it. By comparing these features with those in much younger galaxies, it will be possible to determine how galaxies have evolved over time. The sunburst arc is comparable to the very first galaxies in the universe, at the time of the epoch of reionization, which happened about 13.3 to 12.8 billion years ago, based on the Hubble photos. After the Big Bang some 300,000 years ago, the universe was entirely opaque and full of neutral hydrogen. The hydrogen was then ionized by something which restored the transparency of the universe. Determining the precise mechanisms that occurred throughout the epoch is proving to be challenging because it's quite difficult to see things from that era. The high energy radiation needed to ionize the hydrogen had to have been able to escape galaxies without being absorbed by the interstellar medium, according to astronomers, but there's a catch. The radiation from the first stars and galaxies is thought to have performed this feat. This is something that just a few galaxies have been discovered to perform. Nevertheless, there is a hint in the sunburst arc. It demonstrates that in neutral media with a lot of gas, some photons can leak through small channels. It seems there may have been a variety of contributing elements as more is learned about the epoch of reionization. Although it's unlikely to have been the only factor, the way photons leak from the sunburst arc could have had a significant role. All of that from some boggling heavenly light? Meanwhile, a team of astronomers led by scientists from the Niels Bohr Institute has found a swarm of galaxies orbiting the surroundings of a hyperluminous and actively star-forming galaxy in the observable universe using the Very Large Telescope and the radio telescope ALMA in Chile. The observation offers crucial hints as to how extremely brilliant galaxies develop and transform into intense quasars that radiate light throughout most of the universe that can be observed. How galaxies emerge, develop and evolve is a fundamental issue in astronomy. Most galaxies appear to nurture a supermassive black hole at their center as a component of their evolution. 
The phenomenon known as a quasar occurs when these gravitational monsters occasionally ingest neighboring gas and stars while simultaneously ejecting extra energy as strong jets. There are still many unanswered questions regarding the change from regular galaxies to quasars, but in a recent study that was published in Nature Communications, a group of astronomers from ESO, Garching, led by Michel Genofli, may have made progress in comprehending this evolution. Some galaxies are thought to go through a phase of being very dusty and quite active in terms of star formation and the accretion of gas into their central supermassive black holes before maturing into a full-blown quasar, according to Genofli. To better understand this moment of transition, we set out to conduct an experiment. Genofli and his team concentrated on a previously identified galaxy, W04100913, which is one of the most massive, luminous and gas-rich galaxies in the furthest reaches of the universe and was first observed 12 billion years ago. Infrared light from the glowing dust revealed the galaxy because it has been cooked by energy from the core black hole and starlight, which also causes it to shine. These galaxies are classified as hot dust obscured galaxies as a result, also known colloquially as hot dogs. Genofli and his team, whose core was rather unusually composed largely of early career scholars, chose to observe W04100913 with the MUSE instrument at the Very Large Telescope VLT in Chile because the evolution of galaxies is inextricably associated with its surroundings. They were able to examine a region that was 40 times larger than the galaxy itself thanks to this cutting-edge equipment. Participating in the investigation was Peter Lawson of the Cosmic Dawn Center in Copenhagen. He explains, The observations showed that W04100913 is surrounded by a swarm of no less than 24 smaller galaxies. And the cool thing about the MUSE instrument is that we can measure not only their position on the sky, but also their distance along with our line of sight, in other words, we can measure their 3D positions. Even though this suggests that W04100913 lives in an area that is at least 10 times denser than the rest of the cosmos, this is not altogether unexpected because hot dogs are known to thrive in crowded areas. It is also 10 times as enormous as the Milky Way, despite having been discovered when the universe was only an eighth of its current age. It does need a considerable amount of new material to feed a supermassive black hole and grow a galaxy that enormous in such a short period of time. All of this is consistent with a widely accepted theory that giant galaxies expand through the accretion of gas and satellite galaxies that are drawn by their strong gravity from intergalactic space. In fact, it is predicted that galaxy interactions and mergers will occur at a very high rate in such a dense environment. The astronomers predicted that W04100913 would be a vehicle wreck of chaotically swirling clusters of gas and stars if it was subjected to such a bombardment. However, Genofli and his associates were able to measure the internal velocity of the gas inside the galaxy by examining past observations made by the ALMA radio antennae, which are only 300 kilometers to the northeast of the VLT. And that ends our episode. We hope that you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and leave a comment down below with your own thoughts and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.